Master Grade Rizel Type C General Reveal Defensor A and B Units. Hey, what's up again, everybody? It's Robert 184 2 rs 2 bs Gundam Dot TK, and you've already seen the mobile suit parts that make up the actual MS and all the weapons here for the Defensor A and B units. Now it's time to take this empty pile of plastic and see what kind of MS this Rizel Type C is going to resemble. And when he's all put together, this is looking like a very futuristic and cool grunt. And I'm a huge fan of the color scheme here. Seeing the white and the gray and the orange go all together, albeit just that little bit of orange, it looks fantastic, especially with the clear parts that are going to be all over the place with the help of their silver seals, especially here in the shoulders, these one, two, three combo. Looks great. The gray showing through in all sorts of places, like the inside of the side skirts over there, and even that dubious front skirt over there, is good. Love to see the gray piping back there. It's very Zeta-ish and very transformable Gundam. Perhaps the side skirts could have had some more gray there on the inside. But overall, this MS was definitely well-designed, well-colored, well-implemented. Not your grandpa's gym. But recapitated this, yep, weight issues, you can see why he's supposed to have that walking stick, well, for his back. Nope. Before that I had tried quite a few combinations with the feet to try to get him balanced there with the wingspan attached on. However, even though it does seem like he can set up for a very, very short amount of time, this is without the A or B units attached on. It just seems like he is going to want to go toppling backwards, so the fact that Bandai has included this, yes, it's always a downside that they have to include it, but it's still better to have it than to not, and it's the kind of thing that would be nice to be thrown in for other kits, like Full Armor Unicorn Gundam. But looking at this guy, first impressions, people who say Seed, oh, Strike Freedom Destiny, you're so unrealistic, look what they've done with the coolness back here, they've just made it look a lot more machine-like, a lot more militaristic, and definitely right up there in terms of all-round cool grunts. And he's not even fully armed yet. And so alphabetical order we go. And now you might even think that he has surpassed some of the Seed and Seed Destiny kits for ridiculousness back there. The micro missiles are looking fantastic, especially when you see them from the back, as they are going to have the four different white sections from the front. Not so much. Those middle two are going to look a little bit dull. But remember, you've got the hyper beams there, which you can spin forward which will look like this in the up position and you can bring them down over here and actually have the hand reach up and grab them. For size comparison, even though he doesn't have a master grade and hopefully that's just not yet, this is the Legend Gundam from Seed Destiny on the right and you can see head height, shoulder height and just in terms of the backpack that this guy who generally looks pretty large and filled out has nothing on this Rizel Type C. But even back in Century, the hulked out destroy modes for both the Banshee and the Unicorn Gundam you'd think would tower over almost everything. Head height, they're still going to take the edge, but in terms of overall bulk and size, even with the armored armors, no doubt Rizel for the win. And don't forget that he comes with the regular Rizel weapons, although I sort of thought they'd be a bit of an afterthought. But they're going to look better than you'd expect. Of course, the wings bed in the back helps there. The shield is going to be good, even twisted under regular beam sabers, regular beam rifle. But ultimately, I think all the focus is going to be up high. As it's time to unleash the micro-missile Krakens here. Yeah, this would be a lot cooler in CG. As this is what the A-Type is all about, it's great with the side ones here because you can twist them forward so that you'd be able to show off the missiles on the top. Look at them from the back as you've got 10 times 4 over there, not to mention the 6 on the front. Again, it's going to be disappointing that these two are going to be all closed up, and the fact that they can't rotate means that they're not going to be anywhere near as intriguing as these ones over here. But if you wanted to go ahead and add some paint to those missiles, they would stand out all the more 
But if you just have them in an angry pose launching, that is somebody you do not want to be in front of in space. And as he tosses aside the regular beam saber, you don't want to see what's coming over that shoulder next, if you're an enemy. But the unfortunate fact is, is that they're almost too big for the hand there, and even with the peg, they're not going to fit in there all that well. If I so much as breathed on them, it would probably fall out. But hopefully that's enough time for him to have his left hand out, calling somebody out into a melee battle, which, once you see that firepower up top, you know that the opponent is destined to lose. But if you remember your ABCs here, And here he is with the Defensor A unit on here, probably the better known of the two. It's definitely going to have more of a jet feel to it as just the fact that it's got those cannons on either side. It's not going to look as QB and MLRS as we would see with something like the GPO2. The dark colors here are going to get a little bit lost against the backdrop here, but those guns, when you see them from the back, are going to have the nice white details, and it is going to add a lot of height. But whereas the Defensor A type and the Rizal Type C towered over the Banshee, it seemed just in terms of sheer bulk and power, what do you think here with the Shinenju? Subjectively, I'd say that the Shinenju Stein sort of takes it on the right. And how about these two side by side when you want to talk about heavily laden backpacks? But finally in this contest, Rizal is just going to plead... No contest. For posing first with the Mega Particle Cannons, they're going to be helped by the fact that you can rotate them, but remember you have to rotate the whole thing, including the wings on the back. There's really no need to get a hand on there, but then again, from some angles, it could look pretty cool on your shelf that way. As you are going to be able to get a full rotation around there, and even though this part here isn't going to move, you will be able to rotate them this way, but not too much in before you start banging into the shoulders, but you could bring them over the head this way. But for his next trick, the Mega Beam Launchers here can come over the shoulder with their impressive bend mechanisms showing off again the nice clear yellow and the silver seals underneath. And it seems like you're going to have a lot of options with them. As you can see, it comes over the shoulder and you can get that handle down there and well gripped there. And with this double joint here, you can bend this over the shoulder so you can look like you've got one just semi-deployed there, and you can still have one down in a cool resting position, and whatever you can do with one, you can do with both at the same time. But if it's a straight-on angry shot you want, and remember that you can adjust those wings and these outer parts in all sorts of different directions, well, not all that many, but they're still going to look good. As long as you don't mind the guns coming straight forward at you here, you're not going to have the ability to move them too far off to the side. If you do that, they're just going to spring back nonetheless. With the uh, display of just pure power and the clear parts, and the fact that you can still move them up and down rather well, definitely looking impressive. And with the help of an action base one there and the custom mount, you can have him flying through space there. Position the thrusters however you want. Remember that you can move these out, twist them back, do all sorts of good stuff with that. Same thing with the wings on the top set there. And you can take those two guns and recreate some of the cool scenes from the anime, as long as you don't mind them just staring forward and them both going in the same direction. But yes, he is heavy, and it's the kind of thing that will send him toppling forward on your action base one, unless you're careful or have really tightened up the screw. With so many moving parts and so many weapon options, not to mention just what you can do in terms of posing, it seems like the sky is going to be the limit, or at least space with this guy. Stick around, though, to see the transformation, and, of course, my final verdict after that. And, as always, I'd love to hear what you think of the MS mode of this Rizel Type-C. Thanks for watching, everybody. See ya. Man, the Rizel Type-C puts 50 million weapons on his back, and he's the coolest thing since sliced bread.
Maybe if I went into deactive mode, you'd forget about my nine different colors.